My name is Ethan, I'm 17 due to 10, 18. I am a son, a brother and an uncle. The version of you that others see isn't you, if that makes sense. That other people see you, determine you, have expectations and prejudices and whole sets of understanding about who you are before you've even opened your mouth, before you've even walked through the door. Black men, black people, but especially black men, I'd say, are visible and invisible at the same time. What's inside you doesn't get heard, doesn't get seen. Hi. Oh my god, Ethan! Oh my god! No, no, that's taking it too far. What? One night back in April, I was coming from a friend's house with another friend. We was on our way to the bus stop when approaching the bus stop across the other side of the road was a group of boys. The boys yelled at us. Eventually, they started chasing me and my friend down the road, about six of them. We got caught. And the road was like this, how it is now, with the cars. And so then, we was running the road, everything. That's how you almost got run over. That's how I got caught. And from there, the stabbings happened. There wasn't really much talking. Just from then on. I saw him get stabbed in his leg. And then, well, I didn't know that I was getting stabbed, but I felt like on my back, it felt like a punch, but. No one was helping, no one was helping. There was a lot of people there, but no one was helping. There was people who I know saw the whole thing, but they walked off as if nothing had happened. And when asking passers-by if they could help. They were saying no thanks. Like, they're sorry that they can't help. Passers by ignoring me and not helping me, I felt like they almost made me feel like it was my fault that I got stabbed. I know that in their heads they just thought another young boy fighting, everybody got himself into a situation, and whatever happened that night was all due to my own actions. Oh, yeah, this is the wall. Didn't get no further than this. That's it. Whilst in the hospital, one of the nurses treating me on my ward told me that once I am discharged from the hospital, I should stop carrying knives and fighting on the road, in the street, as what had happened to me was a result of carrying knives and fighting on the street. But I hadn't told her that I carry knives. She doesn't know nothing about me, she doesn't know who I am. So for her to assume that what happened was because of me, it hurts. Saying what she said to me cut deeper than any of the knife wounds themselves. When I had my incident, yeah. when I was in the hospital, a lot of the nurses and other people on the ward was telling me that what had happened was, in a way, my own fault due to what I wear. Down to what you wear? Yeah. It was your fault that you was attacked by people you'd never met before yeah. because of your clothing? Yeah. Wow. That's like saying that when a woman is raped by a total stranger, it was because of what she was wearing and that it's... attracted them. Yeah. yeah, and it's so therefore it's partly her fault. Yeah, that's pretty, that's a, that's a pretty effed up thing to say to a kid that's friggin' almost died. There's a police officer that trims it, right? And one time, 
when he was on, I think, flying squad or drug squad, he came in for a haircut. And um, he had one of his colleagues in, in, in there with him. Uh, this obviously was some white officer from outside of London, didn't really have any real contact with black people from wherever he came from. So, and even though this is a police officer that, that obviously come to get a haircut, we obviously had a relationship, this guy decided to treat me like a suspect. So he's questioning me about how long have I been here, how much money do I earn, what did I do before, until my mate, who was in the chair at the time, had to just tell him to go sit in the car. And then after the haircut, he went out there and gave him a dressing down. But the point was, is that this guy is a police officer from, I don't know, way up north somewhere. His perception was, well, every black person he comes in contact with should be treated the same. I don't even really blame him, really. I mean, every time you pick up a newspaper or read the news, all you ever see is this black kid or group of black guys and hoodies and dark clothes getting up to something. To the point now when anyone sees a group of black kids, black boys, they always think the worst. Tributes have been paid to a 15-year-old boy who was stabbed to death outside. A 17-year-old died from a stab wound to the heart. A knife or blade was used in crime every 16 minutes. Two teenagers have been seriously injured in a suspected stabbing in last night. I think the doctor that discharged you had the perception that you were, because you was a young boy, you black were in boy, a gang. Black boy, black. Okay, black boy. You were in a gang. But why? Why did she feel like that? And why did she say it? She's just rude and she's just one of life's ignorant people. Maybe if she had asked you what the problem was or how it happened, you could have told her. What do you think is my fault and that I got stabbed? It's because I'm black and how I looked that I got stabbed. There's nothing wrong with how you look. There's nothing wrong with the colour of your skin. You keep telling me I don't understand. What don't I understand? I tend to feel invisible nowadays. When I say invisible, I mean people don't actually see me for who I am. It doesn't work where you go in America. No. I wanna try Jamaica. I do feel like as black people we are seen as violent all the and time. Aggressive. And aggressive, yeah. You Even when all. we speak articulately, like I was once I went downstairs to get um, a drink of water and I asked one of like the people that were in charge to get a bottle of water. At the uni thing. Yeah, at our college. It was like another branch of our college and the lady said yes. So I went in to go get a bottle of water, but obviously like the head teacher of that school saw me come out with the bottle of water and was oh, like, we took it. why are you stealing that? Why are you sneaking off with that? I said, I asked the lady if I could have it. It's not like I've come in here and just taken it without permission. And he started saying that I was being rude, aggressive and I was very confused because the way I was speaking to him, I'm, I'm taught to speak to adults with respect and I was speaking to him with respect, but he was treating me as if I was, I don't know, I don't know, it was just really odd. I don't speak like you, most people assume a black person would and when I do that they always say, oh, why are you speaking so posh, why are you speaking like a white guy and I'm like, no I just speak differently and articulately, but it's the assumption that a black person can't speak with intelligence. Look at London from here. Looks quite nice. Is that the shard? No, that's that's Elephant and Castle. Mm -hmm. 
Most successful black men in the media are either rappers, entertainers or athletes, which isn't really achievable for most young people. You don't really see more realistic jobs such as lawyers, doctors, business owners and etc. Young people, especially young black males, need more realistic role models shown on the TV. One of my friends does drama, he wants to be an actor. Another one, a lawyer. Another one that wants to do criminology. Be like doing stuff like that as well. We have to go out of our way a lot to prove almost that we have to prove ourselves of not being what we seem to be. There's a lot of black people that don't actually know any black people personally. They don't really get to communicate with them that much and understand what they really are about. I don't know, solutions? I don't know, I don't know, time I suppose. Time. Once we've all been around each other a lot longer, 